Thank you. Thank you for coming short notice. So to, in today's presentation, I'll show you how my system work. If you have seen it before, there's always something new I explain. And the, and the reason I explaining it so you can manage your trade properly. Any, any monkey can, can go and buy like a monkey can buy and say Airbnb. Um, I'm going to buy Airbnb puts uh, because it went up yesterday. So yesterday Airbnb, when I was explaining that Airbnb, I'm about to lock the gains and I'm not going to buy anything now because I don't know with a big gap, but definitely not puts. But then there are traders who say it's, it will go down. I'm going to buy some puts. So look at the daily chart of Airbnb, what is doing right now. So if you're buying puts yesterday because just because it capped up and the next day you think it's going to go down, then uh, some guru advise you. So don't don't trade like that. Just because the stock gapped up big and then uh, you say, I'm going to go down and it's going to go down. I'm going to buy puts. I'm going to make some money. No, you will lose money. You now you are uh, freaking out right now if you have a shorts in Airbnb or you bought the puts yesterday. So I don't care. Airbnb. I made a lot of money and uh, it could have gone down, but I'm out. So so don't do this kind of trading when just because the stock caps up with a big, huge volume and you start buying puts It's a recipe for disaster. So one or two trade like this on and off, on and off. Uh, you realize you, you, you know, net result during the day, even if you made money some in other trades and then you don't have any plan and listen to some uh, someone or go about doing things net result is zero at the end of the year when you look at your trading account uh, when the christmas is coming so for me the christmas is coming on january 1st i asked the question uh, uh, and i learned this when um, when i was working and people say you know, during holiday hey noji have a nice holiday uh, and then i say man a nice holiday i i don't have anything uh, i know it's a holiday but i didn't increase any uh, assets so Christmas is coming. So January 1st, Christmas is coming. So uh, now one and a half month has passed. So if you trade like this, hazard way, uh, the Christmas is coming and you have nothing to show. So please don't do that. Have a plan and stick to it. So I'll explain something here. So uh, this is a Roku chart. So yesterday I was showing you the Roku and I, I, I drew a detailed chart with the trend line crossing. And I said, uh, you know, it's, uh, I expect the Roku to uh, break the 60 uh, uh, down. Um, it was a upward uh, sloping resistance line. So I showed you, I didn't show you today. Uh, I prepared quickly. So here's the Roku chart. We made 115% gain. It is still rising 76, but eventually it's, uh, what happened is uh, the stock overshoots uh, look at look on the left side so if you don't have a discipline to take profit you will never make money you will never 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 ever grow your portfolio if you don't have a uh, plan so look on the left side here uh, see here my cursor so look at this one and look at today so this is my exit for uh, roku i started selling at 73 and i sent out the trade alerts or pre-market strategy because i know i've sent the alert to my members so i started sending pre-market alert i was watching roku last night also so i knew the levels then this morning i watched i sent all the strategy how to uh, what they need to do uh, and then uh, I will be sending them the alert. So I throughout the day I send the alert to for Roku to manage the trade, when, uh, whether to exit or not to exit. So there was no exit. Roku was moving. Look at the volume, but Roku was moving. Get go from the you know after uh, the market opened. It 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 briefly dipped to 68, uh, 40 something like that from 72, but then it just kept going, going, going. And I had all my levels in Roku. Uh, and then finally exited. And why exit it? Uh, based, based on this resistance level. So I, I don't care if it goes to 76. Eventually it will come and close at 75. It will rest. It will do its thing. It will do its consolidation. Maybe some profit taking will come. Maybe it will go to 70. And maybe it will start rising again. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll say, okay, Roku is another buy. And then I buy it. And this time it it I expect to not to not only to break 75 next time, but I expect it to break the high which it will make today or the tomorrow, etc. In the next few days. So I will note down all those high levels. I know my 75 level. I want Roku to pull back to some 70 levels, 73 levels. And then when I get I see the fresh buy, then I'll buy it. 
and I will play, I will manage my trade. Now I already know. So if you call me, if I'm driving and say, you call me and say, hey, Noji, what's the plan for Roku? So I will ask you, what's the price? And then you will say, right now it's trading at 71. I said, what, what did it uh, high and low yesterday? And you give me the figures and then I will tell you exactly while driving, what's my plan on Roku? So memorize and then uh, leave it. You don't need to do anything. So 115% gain in one day is better than 140% uh, tomorrow or maybe 60% tomorrow. So I'm out. I also explained yesterday, I mentioned that I had a junior miner. So I watch ETFs and I watch junior miners. I watch semiconductors. I watch gold, silver, et cetera. I watch crude. So all this is, is uh, I watch uh, um, uh, treasury bills, I invest in uh, bonds, I invest in all the trustees, I invest in CDs, I invest in real estate. So all that is a, is a com uh, comprehensive uh, trading you need to do and learn. So uh, gold miner, <clears throat> I, I mentioned to you that I have a gold miner trade open and I, I locked in gains of 56%. So gold miner, it may go up, but I locked in. So I log a gold miner also. I log gains in DraftKings. I did mention to you that I'm in a DraftKings yesterday. So DraftKings moved up. Um, uh, this candle, this candle is um, it's called a hanging man. So briefly it dipped. It dipped here. Uh, maybe there was a, some suppliers here or maybe somebody is testing the market if there is any supplier. So this candle is saying that the, somebody was testing uh, the draft king. So, but I don't care if you're testing or if you're doing what. I see my levels here is 19 coming up with the big resistance. So I'd rather sell at 1820 and then to worry about 19 tomorrow. Uh, I may see 17 again and then 33% becomes 0%. So for this, uh, I don't exit. So you shouldn't be exiting just willy nilly just because of, uh, you know, uh, there is some profit. People exit at 10% gain in option. So no good. So I exited DraftKings. So combining DraftKings, Roku, then um, a JDST, and then some other trades uh, gives you per day something uh, to, to feel good about. And you are managing it properly. You're not just exiting just to feel good, but uh, proper. And here is Airbnb. So here is Airbnb. We entered here uh, uh, during the last half hour on uh, today is what Thursday, so Tuesday. So Tuesday we entered here, and I, yesterday I was explaining Airbnb that we lock gains here at the high where the red arrow is. And then uh, remember, one person is saying, "I'm going to buy put." Uh, Airbnb will go down. Okay, yeah, it can go down. Then you will beat the chest. That uh, remember I told you Airbnb will go down, so he will come uh so so i tried to explain that don't just because the stock gapped up you don't need to buy puts just wait for the new signal uh pull back and then uh, the trend is your friend look at this bar look at this volume huge are you denying these buyers are you are you denying these buyers with this volume are you denying this trend was you know why you have to buy puts why not buy calls so buy i'm buying puts so don't do this kind of trading buying puts and they'll see what happened uh, is it going to 145? Maybe uh, God knows where it's going. So the people come on TV and then they say they 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 they, they you know they come up and they draw all kinds of trend lines and then they show look at this two week high um, two years ago exactly this is the level it hit. So I think I'm gonna go short. And uh, what happened? One or two dollar dip and then it starts to go up and then you're all clobbered. So now you don't have any. So unless you exited early morning with the, your puts, uh, don't do this kind of trade. So just wait, let it go. If you don't have Airbnb, you cannot uh, go long now. You need some kind of pullback because your risk is higher and higher and higher if you are going long on Airbnb. There is no, uh, right now, unless uh, you, you, um, you define your risk somewhere in the middle of this level. So when, when, when you, we are entering in the trade, we need to define where the exit. If we don't know the exit, I'm not touching anything. If I don't know the exit, and I learned this from Robert De Niro. So Robert De Niro, the famous actor, my, one of my favorite, he taught me, he said, no, she don't exit. Uh, don't enter if you don't know the exit. And he taught me through his movie. And so in one of the movie, in the mafia movie, he goes with his gang. Uh, it's, it's some uh, European uh, country, and he's about to enter in the building with his friends. 
and then he disappears. And then after 10 minutes later, he come back and then his friends ask, where did you go? He said, I went to the back of the building to find out uh, if I'm going in because he was going inside to meet uh, the other gangster uh, chief. He said, I'm going, once you, before you enter any building, you need to know where you will be exiting when all um, uh, uh, shit hit the fan. So he went to the back of the building and he, you know, he was looking at all the windows because he has to get out when things uh, break all hell loose. So, so before you enter, you need to know where is my exit. So there are so many trades which look good, but I, I don't know where will be the exit. My exit is just uh, slipped away. So don't want to trade like uh, Doku moving today, T Doc moving today. So I cannot uh, find out where the exit is too far. So I'm not going to enter. So here is the Airbnb. So don't trade without a plan. Here is the data dog. Uh, so uh, data dog, we we entered next day, uh, thirty five percent gains, and today uh, data dog is um, uh, looks like gap down and moving up. So gap down and moving up. So right now uh, I'm just watching data dog again for entry. So 35% gain in data dog. Here is the coin. I entered coin yesterday. I missed the coin. Uh, but today I still see a lot of buying in coin. So, so I bought coin and I will exit at 75, some between 75, 78. So the, here is the coin chart. This is, I have open trade. So this is quite, this is CLF. So I'm showing you the chart of CLF. CLF is attempting to break 21 levels. And um, th this is the resistance here, 22 and a half. So I have a short term calls. If it goes 22, near 22, et cetera, I will be getting out of uh, CLF. Now, uh, I always talk about Bruce Lee, that you practice one kick one 10,000 times. So uh, please do uh, master a few things and just uh, keep doing it and your portfolio will grow. Uh, keep an eye on dinosaurs. So you need to learn the, how to detect dinosaurs. These are the big boys. The big boys are buying. Uh, when they buy, you need to detect their moves. So dinosaurs, big moves, they are the one buying. So you can, you shouldn't be uh, trading against dinosaurs. Uh, you shouldn't be buying puts in Airbnb. So dinosaurs, master the few chart patterns. I always explain that you need, don't need to master everything. Millions of things there, just master a few. But the few are still too much. So there are a lot of uh, tips and tricks and a lot of things you need to master even though you say few so uh, don't be uh, going about and learning all kinds of indicators and uh, you know go to youtube and uh, learn this and somebody say one well, learn that nothing works uh, so if something is working for you uh, please tell me if something is working if something works and then it stops then you need to know something needs to work again and again. If something works and sometimes doesn't work, it's no good. It needs to work. So when something doesn't work and sometimes work, maybe it's not the thing you master, it's other things. So you need to identify what are the other things. Maybe you change, you become old. Maybe you cannot think properly. Maybe you have a lot of activities going on. Maybe you're stressed. Maybe it's not the market, the kind of market when you learn that thing and it was working and now it's not working so maybe the market is not there for that kind of uh, uh, techniques you learn so so think about that basket of stock prepare your basket of stock i always have a ready my basket stock and i pull uh, the stocks which are um, moving so if you are a short-term trader you're looking for something which is moving that category that industry group that sector which is moving in and out so look for those uh, um, baskets. So if you're not prepared, if not done the homework, you cannot make money unless somebody is holding you so the, or you sign up for my newsletter or somebody's newsletter where the person is um, spending time to doing things. And if, if the other person is saying only you need to spend 75 minutes or 60 minutes or 45 minutes and then you just go to the beach, he is lying. Price discovery. There are so many chart patterns I have explained. I'm not explaining to you today because I've explained before. So I'm just skipping. I'm going to show you how the trading system uh, alerts are sent. So I'm just passing through this. So I have explained previously all these things I do the gap up, gap down, gap up, reversal, chart patterns, uh, support and resistance, uh, understanding the volume, understanding all the things needs to go through. Volume is important. Today, Roku volume was huge. 
from the beginning. So you have to understand what is the volume uh, and not only the price. So pay attention to the volume. Roku volume was huge. Airbnb volume was huge. So uh, if the volume is huge and gapping up positive news, that tells you that the, the dip uh, early morning, like uh, the, within the first 30 minutes is temporary. Uh, you know, it, it, it may it may fake you out. So pay attention to the volume. So volume needs to be observed when things are moving because uh, that's where volume means people are there. So I explain in detail each each of these uh, is, is, is a different uh, lot of lot of talking each each of these bullets lot of talk. So um, uh, I'll explain something uh, later in other presentation I've done. So filters, you need to have a filter to make your life easy. So have some, uh, set up some filters on your trading platform, some volume filters, some price filters, high, low, 52 week high, 20 day moving average, 50 day moving average, average true range, how much it moves per day, then how much it has moved so far during the day, during the week, etc. All this you need to know when the volume is spiked, you need to know what is the relative volume at that given time. Is it high, low, average, below average, unusual? All this you need to know. Sudden move in the price, suddenly the stock starts to move up. What is going on? Let me check. So today CYH is a small price stock. I bought some. Uh, you just uh, keep coming, um, you know, keep keep knocking at the door. So it's like, knock, knock, I'm here, look at me, knock, knock, here, I'm here, look at me. And then finally I say, okay, let me see. Oh my God, the CYH is really looking good. Let me buy some shares. I don't know anything about CYH. All I know is looking pretty. So I can go and look, uh, but I, I dip my, my, uh, my toe in CYH. So I don't know what it is, but I saw the charts and everything. I bought some. Then I will do the research and I'll become master of CYH. If I lose money, uh, I dip my toe, but I'm riding it. So when you don't know, uh, if you think you have missed the move, uh, maybe you buy a little bit. So if the stock is breaking out, it's breaking out and it's going to higher and higher levels. So if you may not, you may regret and it's not good for your health when you're regretting maybe you buy a little bit and then uh, do your analysis and, and then build your position so alerts all kinds of alerts you need to set so there are so many kinds of alerts you need to set and all the alerts so when you're setting the alert the only the alert you set set is uh, the where you pay attention other otherwise you don't call it alert alert means you know alert when the fire truck is moving uh, and you're driving and the fire uh, truck comes with the horn, you are alerted. You go on the side or stop or whatever. Uh, otherwise, there are thousands of fire trucks are going on the road. You're not paying attention to all the fire trucks and ambulances and police cars, only where the la lights are moving. So same way where you set the alert criteria where you need to pay attention to each alert. So need to know what alert I'm uh, setting. Uh, and then that requires your attention because you cannot focus everything. Your brain has a limited capacity. Maybe set some kind of alert where a you know, pop-up is coming and the email is coming and uh, some ding, 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 ding. So you get alerted. So pay attention to what kind of alert you're setting and whether it's important or not, just don't set alert for everything. So cut down on your alert, pay attention to the, the most important alerts. You don't need too many alerts, just few. So I do that and uh, so, I'm doing all this and now I'm going to explain if you are a member or if you're a trial member or a paid member of any service, what you need to do, uh, I make your life easy. So I make your life easy. So I'm always looking, uh, I'm always looking to, um, I'm thinking I'm thinking from the other point of view. I'm thinking what the other guy is thinking. So even when you're trading, you need to think what the other guy is thinking. So if you're buying puts on Airbnb, what the other guy is thinking? Um, uh, other guys are thinking that it's gonna go up. Uh, and I'm buying ports, so not good. So from me, from this uh, providing the service point of view, I say, okay, what the other guy, uh, my members are thinking, what they need. So, uh, so you don't need. Uh, we have something called Ram Kahani. You know, you don't need uh, me to read you a story. Uh, once upon a time, you know, there was a company called Meta, and they came up. You don't need all that. You just need tell me what to buy and when to buy, what price to buy, and tell me when to sell. That's it, Noshi. I don't care. So I don't give you the story. 
I tell you what to buy. So in a little subject line, I say Meta calls December 130. Let's say it's the month of November or October. I send you a simple alert. Say, hey, buy Meta calls December 130 at $10. And in the subject, in the body of the email, this thing is described. That's it. I don't tell you the whole uh, the story and you know RSI is this, the stock is this, the P ratio is this. You you don't care and I don't care too. So just uh, uh, so it, when you are receiving my alert, another thing, when, whenever you're receiving somebody's advice, uh, your belief and his person's belief uh, should match. If your beliefs are not matching, doesn't matter what I say, I will not follow. Uh, whatever you say, I will not follow you because I my belief and your belief is not aligned. So it takes it is hard uh, to adopt other person's belief but uh, eventually uh, you start believing when you start seeing the results so maybe you need to do some paper trading etc some simulation and then align your beliefs so when we send you the trade alert you can look at the chart and see if it makes sense so if it doesn't make sense you ignore it so when you when it makes sense and you're taking it uh, it means my you you have aligned your belief with my belief so this is what i do i send you the alert like that in a subject line through sms and in the body after we send you the alert, then I send you the chart also. So what you need to do is uh, you know, don't chase. Uh, sometimes it just it slips, so it's okay. Otherwise, uh, try to buy the limit order. Uh, put the limit order. Whatever we uh, mentioned, put that limit order. Maybe five, ten cents ex ex extra, depending on the the depending on the option price. So try to. Um, uh, by uh, it's called um, uh, shaving the spread or, or or there's another terminology so between bid and ask so try to shave if the spread is, is like 30 40 cents so try to shave the spread meaning buy in the middle otherwise uh, just put the limit order for if if you're in if you're intending to buy 10 contract maybe three or four at a little higher price and the rest just little below so your average becomes the same and Whatever, whenever you get filled, you get filled. Uh, if you don't fill, uh, then don't let the, your trade uh, hanging there. Always, even if you're trading on your own or following someone else, you need to cancel your buy order. You may be catching a falling knife. So if you bought, if you intend to buy 10 and you get filled seven uh, and the three is not there, you cancel it. Uh, don't leave it uh, there because you may uh, get something bad. So uh, the sell order, uh can be gtc good till cancel but the buy order should not be um, overnight or um, no more than 10 15 minutes if it's not there it's not there i don't leave my buy order hanging i, I check my open order and i cancel it if it's not filled so and never buy it um i mean uh, if you're buying at the market price you're just chasing it and uh, you're panicking so selling at market price equal panic so you're panicking you're greedy so don't do that when you are selling maybe you sell at market price because there you have too much profit and it's just going crazy it's like roku or it's like airbnb is flying uh, or it's like tesla and you just want to get out so still you can get bad fill but the liquidity is tied you know the spread is good and the market price you will be out it's not some crazy fill you will get so make sure you if you're selling them at the market price the stock and options are liquid uh, not uh, the not like not you are not the only one who's selling it there so when you receive the buy alert the stock is trading in a range so pay attention to the stock so uh, see what what is doing so today coin coin did move fast uh, as soon as we send the alert it just it was moving and it moved so stock should trade in a narrow range and then we send you and shave the spread so when you're shaving the spread you don't try to squeeze the market maker uh you know don't beat him so if the uh, so nobody likes to be uh, uh you know taken advantage so so you do like this uh, if if the ask is 10 and the bid is let's say 940 so there is a 60 percent spread 60 cent spread so you say okay you know i'll put the my bid at 960 and it's 940 bid and ask is 10. so don't do that maybe 970 980 till towards the ask 
So, uh, and you will get fill. You will also get fill, not because the market maker is giving you, uh, but uh, the stock will move up and down. So just moving up and down and it's a liquid and it's moving faster, you get fill. So, so do that. Second thing is, uh, if you're not fill, let's say you're not fill and we send you the target. So we send you the green, yellow, and red target. I'll explain to you later. So there are three targets, first, second, and third. So look at the potential of the trade. So sometimes the, the potential in the trade, it does, does it matter if you pay five, 10 cents? So uh, let's say you're buying a house and uh, the, the seller is asking 650 and um, and then you see the potential um, uh, for it to go to 1 million. Does it matter if you pay uh, um, uh, 640 or 645 or 625 or 630, something like that? Because if you see the potential is 1 million, so you don't care, right? So you don't haggle with, uh, okay, you pay. I mean, I, you try to get the best price, but don't let the good deal you know, slip away. So don't haggle over 5, 10 cents and let the good deal uh, disappear. So uh, pay attention. See, uh, when we send you the target, the target, uh, the way the targets are set is uh, at least a yellow target, which is the middle target, is like 5, 6% uh, from the current price. So you know 5, 6, 7% uh, uh, translation of a stock uh, um, turns into 60, 70% gains in the option. So if it's green, yellow, and red, if it's 7% or 8%, then 60-70% um, gain. If you pay 5 tens extra, you you will not make 60% gain, maybe 50% gain or 45%. So pay attention to the mid target and compare the current bid price, ask price and bid, and then uh, decide. So do that, you have to manage your buy order. And similarly, you have to manage your sell order, but I guide you all the way, I'm sending you all the updates, et cetera. So here's the guideline, which I explain also in my trading system guidebook, that when the option is trading in a certain price range, you can pay extra. So if it's if the option is trading at between 70 and $1, so there is a bid and ask of five cent difference. So when the bid and ask of five cent difference, uh, okay, instead of buying at 70, maybe you bought at 75 and the rest, or the half you can buy at 65. Maybe you get filled at 65, some got filled at 75. On the other hand, when the option is trading between let's say $12 and 20, so this is the range I created. So this is my range. So let's say option is trading between 12 and 20, it's a Tesla. So if it's a Tesla and you're buying calls, so Tesla moved 10, 20 points, and uh, option seven, eight dollars. So for seven, eight dollars, if you pay 40, 50 cents extra, it, it doesn't uh, matter much. So if it goes away, um, you know, the, um, if the limit order was sent to buy at $13 and 40 cents, and it's just so happen you, when you open your app, and it's already 1090, 1390. So you say, okay, I'll try to buy at 1370, uh, one contract provided your portfolio allows you you, know, you need to have a bigger size account. This is the end of this. Uh, if I start writing all the mistakes I I have done, so and all the other traders do every day, uh, there can be a big uh, like a thousand page book on mistakes. So and the traders they jump in in Tesla. You know, um, people want to buy Tesla. Tesla I think have made uh, Tesla stock have made lot of losers. Um, and wiped out uh, traders. Uh, so when this kind of a, you know the the stock which becomes hard, uh, they they uh, they wipe out millions of traders because they hear Tesla, they see Tesla, they they just open an account uh, with seven eight thousand dollars of Robinhood and then they see the account growing. And they keep buying options or buying shares or options or something, and then finally it gets them wipe them out so nine thousand dollar account goes to 14 15 and then 14 15 um, because they only have one position which is tesla they keep buying 
and then uh, you know buy and sell. Okay, I bought it and I sold it today. Uh, it went up three point. I sold it. I made this much money. Then tomorrow I'm gonna buy again. Okay, I bought it and I sold it again. I made two three point. And then I bought it. And then during the day it just reversed six seven eight points. Now I'm not going to sell. How can I sell? It's losing. Tomorrow I'm going to sell because when I, I'm making money for last one week, and it never comes back. I bought it at four hundred and now it's trading at eighty dollars or hundred dollars. So I'm wiped out. Maybe I sold it at uh, 101 and then it it hit 100 and then it bounced back up and uh, it took off. So don't do that. Don't just trade one stock. Don't trade high flying stock if your portfolio doesn't uh, have the capacity. If your portfolio is not like a China wall, you need a China wall kind of portfolio if you trade Tesla. Otherwise, stick to uh, a stock like Momo, Riot you know these are small price and even then you have to manage it's the risk is all relative so pay attention to the bid and ask and the target to buy and buy some uh, don't buy uh, everything at a higher price so uh, don't be over anxious over partial execution don't think that the bus is uh, any trade don't think this is the last trade there's another one coming there's so many trade in uh, if you're expert or if you have a capacity to monitor there are so many trades that you cannot take all the trade um, out there so there are so many is the point is when you think in terms of bets the, the trading is like a casino uh, you need to bet a small small and then build your portfolio uh, build your position uh, over the time and then exit properly uh, there's there's there so many so many trades out there you cannot take everything even if you have millions and millions of dollars you will not create any wave your your expertise should be in how to manage so spend time in managing the trade how can i manage this trade so management part is the most important you can buy then how do you manage so think about the management part and how you will exit so don't pay extra for remaining contract if you don't get filled it's your bid someone will want to sell to you so when the stock fluctuate you will get filled the stock may burst to the upside and then subside and then you get filled if you don't get filled you cancel your limit order you don't want your limit order to be hanging there all um forever you don't want it so you just cancel it and only for a few minutes your buy order is good only for a few minutes otherwise it's not and you just cancel it you don't need to be there you can put the limit order again you see you know, all the big boys the high frequency traders they are creating all the fake orders and they are disappearing in nanosecond they create fake orders and disappear i don't know what tricks they do but i know they do uh, they you know flood the market with fake orders and cancel it within nanosecond before you even realize it happened and just gone so they are doing all that you are trading against them you're trading if you are with them in, in uh, but they are always there ahead of you so think about that and so i have a very little chance of uh, uh, i mean to start with you have a you are up against the big boys the the richest family in the world they are not just doing the business they have uh somebody is trading for them making millions the institution the pension funds the hedge funds the big boys all the experts top traders they are all trading and you're trading against them or with them so you just want to trade with them and figure it out and and say hey big brother you know uh, give me some so that's it you're asking big brother give me some and you're happy so once you once you uh, once you when you see the the trade uh, generated immediately then ask a question um, you know remind yourself what robert de Niro taught you so you say okay yeah robert de Niro told me this i need to follow uh, listen to him and then i need to list also listen where is my money where i will exit so the target needs to be constantly reviewed uh, right at the time when you're entering the trade uh, you need to know exactly and then constantly reviewed every day it needs to be reviewed so what triggers the target revision so you need to set up the system of target revision what makes you uh, revise the target so if you have 40 positions open then 
uh, how do you go about uh, revising all the targets they are in place they are getting executed they are getting triggered and when you will be revising the targets when you will be revising the target to the upside when you will be revising the target to the downside and uh, fine tuning it so you need to have a proper system because target determination is science and the art so pay attention uh, to working on the targets so we provide you three targets called green, yellow, and red, or first, second, and third. So it's like a traffic light. So it's like a traffic light. Uh, every kids know my even my little daughter or son knows the uh, you know the traffic signal. Uh, so everybody knows, uh, and they chose the color. Uh, the government is uh, very smart. They chose the color not uh, on a haphazard way. They chose these colors for some reason because we pay attention to the uh, yellow green and red and uh, the location everywhere on the road so you see um, uh, they 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 know which color will um, uh, we will pay attention so there is a reason for these colors so same way in green yellow and red so i will explain what is green yellow and red today was a beyond red target for roku yesterday was airbnb and today was beyond red uh, for Roku, so I will explain what happened to Roku today. So here's the green target. So green target is the immediate target. So it's like, I keep giving you example, explaining you, I live in San Diego area. So I say, if I'm going from San Diego to Seattle, then LA is my green target, or maybe, mm, maybe a uh, little north or maybe ventura or something like that is my or maybe santa barbara is my green target so it depends so maybe early saturday morning uh, if i'm leaving san diego i know i expect uh, to be in santa barbara maybe in three four hours or la in one hour so the green target is the one which it will immediately hit uh, have a very high probability there is a clear uh, sailing so uh three percent or four percent so if you don't uh if their stock doesn't move three four five percent from your entry point then uh uh it can move the other way four five percent and you will lose so at least you need three four five percent move immediate without any resistance so figure out the resistance when from your entry where is the resistance if the resistance is there what kind of resistance there is it a strong resistance is it a weak resistance what resistance is there so pay attention to the resistance when you are going long see all the turning point so i pay attention to all that so there is a 95 percent probability of a stock hitting the green target so when the stock hits the green target i mm, see it and then i sell you the send you the alert saying hey sell one third of your position meaning if you have nine contract you sell three sometimes when the green target doesn't hit right away and it creates a resistance then we send you the alert to sell all so we did that today in DraftKing. so green target hit we were up 35 percent um instead of sending you alert to sell one third i send you the alert to sell all so there are different reasons for changing it so so a trader must be flexible not rigid but the the way the system is designed to sell one third so if you have six contract you sell two so once you sell one third we know i know you know so we keep the remaining for the higher target which is a yellow and red in case of calls or shares so yellow or red so sell one third alert is sent to members and we note it down in our diary we say okay one third i and then sell one third and uh, remaining is open okay remaining is open any target i need to see to uh, revise or stop levels etc i do that and set it and forget it and so it just goes in the back burner next is the yellow target so yellow target if you're traveling from san diego to seattle the yellow target is like you can say san francisco so san francisco major is stop uh, you will go through the city uh and then you will stop somewhere over there so it's like uh, so the way i do it i figured out the resistance level not a very big resistance but some resistance where it's uh or some overbought level or so, or three days or five days of move or uh some uh, percentage of um, um, uh, weekly you can say atr or a monthly atr so so pay attention how much it moves on a monthly basis or weekly basis to take that percentage do something about it or study the resistance levels in case of long position and see the 
intraday chart, look at all the landscape, and then figure it out where is the turning point, where it has turned before. So in case of Roku, let's say Roku had a 75, so that is a red target, but uh, Roku uh, yellow target is let's say 71 or 70, something like that. So there's an 85 percent probability of a stock hitting the target. So have, and this is where you make the more uh, uh, you expect that you will make a decent gain, a real decent gain, like 67 or 60 percent, 80 percent, something like that. So seven, eight percent move in the stock. So it's stock, and then because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, there is some resistance there, so you expect. So resistance means sellers. So sellers are sitting there. So the, so imagine all the. Um, just think about this. Let's say Roku. Roku people bought at seventy five. So they are all waiting for this day to come, and finally it has arrived. All the sell orders are there. Good till cancel. So they are all getting uh, filled right now. So I don't know what Roku is doing. They get filled. If if the buyers are more than the sellers at 75, then the Roku will uh, move above 75. If there are more sellers than buyers uh, and there's nobody left. So, so all the sellers who bought Roku before at 75, they were buyers. They all were trapped and now they are selling. All the buyers who bought Roku yesterday, the day before yesterday, and all that, they are happy. They are selling. So they are selling at 75. So these buyers and the previous buyers, they are all selling at 75. Now comes the, if, so if there are more buyers, then all this uh, selling will be absorbed by the buyers and the buyers, then eventually the Roku will go higher. Otherwise, Roku will pull back because the buyer meets the seller, seller meets the buyer, handshake, okay, we are done. And that's it. Then the stock pulls back for seven, eight points, and then it's new buyers come in. So the same way, yellow target uh, concept. So if you have, a, we sell you, send you the alert depending on how much profit we have made or how much is there. So we either send you the alert to sell one half or three fourth of your original position. So if you bought eight contract, you sell four or six. So we send you the alert, sell one half or one or three fourth. Uh, three fourth means majority. So sell half or sell majority of the alert is sent to the members. So uh, when the Roku hit, uh 73 something like that today we send you the alert to sell half when it went close to 74 75 we send you the alert to sell majority and then we send you the alert to sell rest so we close the roku trade so after the sell majority is sell half um if it's a major resistance hitting and we know that okay this is a turning point before and it can pull back and we may give back the profit and chances are and it's option especially if it's option so option time decay two three day of down move and then we are back to square one so 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 we sold if it's especially if the event has occurred so um we were we were positioned in the trade before the event and then the event occurred the stock gaps up huge and and it's reaching the point where it is uh, where the stock has previously turned around and went down so all that tells me i need to uh, sell so sell alerts or sell rest alert is sent to members the red target so when we entered in the roku trade uh, yesterday at 60 and i showed you the chart so the target was 68 but after market hours, uh, Roku went up and it was trading at seventy dollars fifty cents, seventy forty. So it crossed the red. So now the some resistance is crossed during the after hours or during the pre-market hours. So we, it's like a river. So you know you are on this side. Somebody is chasing you. The dog is behind you. No, no country for old men, something like that movie, you know, where the dog is chasing and then you jump in the river and then you cross the river and you go on the other side. So you're safe, but you can sometimes get the magic carpet and then you just sit on it and fly and go on the other side of the you know, river. So same like that. There's a big resistance so channel, let's say channel with the resistance. And then suddenly an event occurred. So the dog has arrived. So even occurred, now you need to get to the other, and then it so happened the magic carpet arrived, and then you landed on the other side of the river. So it's the same thing, Roku, the resistance was there, and then even occurred, the earning came, 
and it jumped and it went on the other side. Now, the Roku, uh, because the dog is on this side, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be crossing the river again and coming back and say hey i'm here come and get me so you, you don't want to do that so same way the the stock has crossed a major resistance it shouldn't come back into the resistance zone and then go below the resistance so you don't want to see that so yesterday roku was uh, roku even went to 72 73 I, I think it went to even 75 and but then um in the pre-market so i was watching uh, roku pre-market so it was trading at 60, 30, 60, 40. So it was trading in the resistance zone. It was trading at the red target. So now uh, it's, it's become very tough, uh, especially, I mean, I can sell right away and push the button and sell, but it's very tough to send the constant update to the members. So, so the strategy was sent to the members. Pre-market strategy, these are the levels we are watching. Don't let the Roku go below this level. And on the way up, uh, watch the Roku uh, for these targets. Now, the market opened. I started watching Roku on five minute chart, three minute chart. And on one side, the Roku chart minute, uh, three uh, minute, five minute charts. And on the other side, I'm watching the bid and ask for my strike april 65. so i'm seeing there was a, some wide spread in the beginning which is normal when the market opened the spread gets wider because somebody is selling somebody is buying and the market maker is uh imagine the job of the market maker for roku option so think about that the market maker has thousands of its strikes and he has to manage all he has to make sure that he doesn't go broke tonight when everything is done so he's doing all his thing and all hell is breaking loose on his side and you are just trying to make some money so uh, watch the the best time best thing to do when this thing happen is watch the uh, focus laser focus on one trade which is roku you're not trying to find other stock to trade you have a big stake in roku you need to focus on roku so bid and ask focus is on the cell phone so i open the chain on uh, roku on my cell phone so cell phone needs to be good internet good very fast everything so i open the cell phone put it cell there and i'm laser focused on april 65 bid and ask and i can see the bid and ask bid and ask the spread is wide then it gets narrow then it gets narrow then it gets wide and all that the volume is going on and then on my other monitors I'm watching the Roku chart on a three minute, five minute chart and look, watching all the volumes and all the price action. Then I'm creating the ranges. So, okay, this is the lower range. This is the upper range. So upper range is 72. The lower range is 68. It's fluctuating between 68, 72, 68, 72. So eventually, uh, what side will win? You have to come come up with the, with the result. You should know um, uh, chances are that it will break to the upside so as soon as uh, so kept sending you the alert and then when it broke 72 now the uh, you know it's like another river cross so once you cross the river it's like another pond or the mud hole or somewhere you get it stuck so it's the same thing it's the other little bit above and then it start to move up so i kept sending you the alert and then finally it's near 75 sold everything so that is the red target so red target needs to be watched. So when I send you the red target, it meant to be like that major resistance. But then what happened uh, when the red target is cross uh, because of some event, some dog was chasing and then you got the magic carpet and you jump on the other side of the river. So the stock gaps above red target. So this is what happened to Roku. Uh, and then it stays above red. So it stays above red 68 safe to hold as long as it doesn't break 68 it's safe to hold breaks below red i need to sell so sometimes the stock gaps up there's no follow through and then it starts to fall apart so you don't want that to happen then you don't have uh, uh you just say oh my god oh my god i i, I don't know where to sell i am uh, i saw five thousand dollar profit now i see two thousand now i see one thousand now i see zero dollar profit now i see negative thousand and then you paralyze so you don't want to do that if the one button is on the sell order so uh, so and then uh, and then i'm sending you the alert so when uh, i sent the pre-market target uh, in advance pre-market so target needs to be revised so the target gets adjusted based on the price action based on the news and what kind of a 
things are happening in the pre-market and as soon as the market open. So traders need to be flexible. You need to immediately go to the drawing board and figure it out, the new target. And various reasons to revise the red target. So target is revised to capture more gains. So that's the objective, to capture more gains. So that's what we did. So targets can be revised to the upside for calls or downward for the puts. So if something is tanking, so if something is tanking, the target may be revised to the downside. So I have a, a take a look at the trip chart. So I have puts in trip, uh, I bought puts two, three days ago. Yesterday it went up and today it gapped down. So the trip puts. Um, another another stock which you need to pay attention for the puts is a, uh, Autodesk, ADSK. So see what is, uh, Autodesk is doing for the puts. So these are the two stocks for puts, TRIP and Autodesk. So targets adjusted downward for puts. So now TRIP has gapped down. If it continues more down, uh, I will uh, revise my targets. So targets needs to be revised downward for puts and upward for calls. So the way I revise, I move, I shift the target. Second target is gone into the first target place and the third target goes into the second target and I send you the new target. When I'm sending you a new target, the green arrows or the black arrows to the upside is shown next to the target. So you can kill your EC, the targets are revised and the target may also shrink. So if the resistance is getting created, you need to, you need to be, forget about uh, um, making money you worry about your capital. You know, sometimes you get into bad deals. You don't worry about your uh, profit. And if you have some profit already taken partially, that will reduce your cost of uh, the remaining. So you just say, okay, I made, I had 500 shares. I sold 200 with profit. Now the remaining cost for the 300 shares is this. And now I see it not doing good. So what is my cost basis for the 300 shares? My cost basis is below. Uh, because I made money on the 200 shares. So now my cost basis is below. So even if I sell those 300 shares at a loss, I am coming out break even. So do this kind of calculation. So sometimes the targets may also shrink. Sometimes you don't even sell anything. You had a 500, you wanted to make $100 profit. Now there is no $100 profit left. You say, okay, you know what? It's $40 and I am just need to get out and move on. So you move on. So how you decide to move on when you have um, a smaller size bet. If you have a big size bet, then even if a little move is killing you, a little move against you is kill you because you put a big size bet. So learn to increase the bet size at the proper time. Initiate at a lower bet. So just test and then, then, um, then increase the bet size. So, uh, another thing with the top traders uh, do, so there's a course I teach and it's coming up next week. I teach uh, and I learn from the top traders so uh, of the world. So not the top traders, just any willy-lilly. I, I have spent time with the top traders of the world. So I learned a few things from them. And one of the thing is the multiple exits. So multiple exits needed. So the top traders have the capacity to buy multiple times. They have the capacity to buy a little bit here, then there, then there. It's not they buy only one time and that's it. Done. I can't buy anymore. So if you if you're not blessed uh, like that, maybe you do something and uh, about it. So multiple um, entries. They buy multiple times. They buy multiple units. They buy multiple contracts. They uh, trade uh, different markets, multiple. They have expertise in uh, various markets, all kinds of markets and various markets. They understand the whole picture. So this may come with the age and experience or with the time you spend. Uh, multiple, the top traders have the expertise in multiple exits. So they know when to exit and how to exit. So it, it requires some, some, some experience. So multiple complex, metrics for your exits. So the multiple complex exits metrics. So right now here is looking simple to you. I'm showing you this, uh, we send you the alert, sell one third, sell half, sell majority or sell rest. So these are all kinds of alerts we send you sell all, but behind is a complex arithmetic uh, formulas running uh, uh, different criteria. There are hundreds of criteria running behind. I've automated a lot of them. I used to do manually. 
uh, automated a um, lot of stuff. So multiple exits. So need to figure it out. And maybe you sit down and create um, some document and say, okay, you know, if this thing hits, if this, then I exit this much. Then if this hits, then I exit this much. If this hits, I exit this much. If this event is triggering, I, I exit completely. So to figure it out all the reasons for your exit protocols. So we do send you these alerts, cell one third, cell half, cell majority, cell rest, cell all. I will explain more in detail in some, you know, I have a, uh, like my assignment, assignment to teach. So one of the assignment to teach is to create the matrix and show you the, uh, the dependency. So think about the dependency. Maybe you learn something in the school dependency. So one event occurs and then another event is occurring. If this event doesn't occur, then this event cannot occur. Or if this event is occurring, then you have a choice of A and B, and then you decide which you choose, A or B. If you choose A, then this. If B, then C and D. So, so uh, if you do that, your profit will go up and your life will be more happier. So I will explain. So we also send you the sell price range. So in case of the stock being volatile, like Roku today or Airbnb yesterday, I cannot send you one, the, the sell at $10.40. It's not going, so I don't know. Maybe when I send you the alert, it was trading at $10.20. Maybe it was trading at 11. So I give you the range. I start giving you the range, a little wider range, so you can sell either for the option or for the stock. Also, I could have sent you Roku today to sell at by close, market close. So whatever is the price, just sell your Roku position or sell your Airbnb position five minutes before the market close. So you can do that when the stock is volatile. So Roku and Airbnb are the clear examples. So understand the multiple exit uh, and learn to create multiple exits. So, and focus on your position during pre-market and after-market. So it's important to note down the levels in the pre-market and after-market so you know what happened, what is the potential. So I saw Roku hitting 75, so I knew 75 is there, but then it pulled back six to 68, 40, 50. So uh, there was a cause of concern that, uh, that it, it, it went to 75 and then it uh, 68, 50, so it's a big pullback. So, uh, but you know, it it wanted to go up, so it went up. So, so pay attention to the pre-market or after-market. So I look at the pre-market after our market hours and see if there's something moving and what else is going on. And then I prepare my strategy before even I sleep. So nighttime I prepare the strategy, and I, I have it with me, and then I send it to my team also. So I say, okay, this is the strategy I need. I will be following on a Roku. So my team knows and I know. So so to prepare the strategy, if you know the outcome in the aftermarket hours, some event occurred. So event occurred, which is earning event or something else occurred. So pre-market, aftermarket, you need to watch your position during these hours. Chances are stock will pull back during a regular session. If the stock has hit your target, some major target during pre-market or aftermarket hours, there is a major chance that the stock will hit uh, pullback during the regular session. So now your job become more harder. So the job become harder because the major target of 75 hit during the pre-market hours, and now it's opening at 68.50. Now what to do? You know, it's easy. If if you, let's say if you're chasing someone and he's going straight, it's easy. You know, he went there and I'm chasing, chasing, chasing. But if he starts moving around, round, round circle, how are you gonna figure it out? So, 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 uh, you know, it went to 75 and then it's come back to 68.50. I don't know what it will do now. Maybe it will go to 65. But if it uh, hit 72 and it's trading at 71.50, not a big thing. So I know it hit 72, now it's trading at 71.50. So I just watch uh, 71.50, 70 level. So pay attention to regular sessions and pay attention to the pre-market and after-market for the news and how the stock is moving and what is the volume there. So a stock must gap above red for calls and below red for puts. So if you have determined some red target, some major target based on some resistance level or some pre-event, pre something you figure it out. So it must gap above for calls or and it must gap down below for puts and must continue its journey. So Roku did not, uh, Roku uh, pulled back and then it started its journey. So it did that. So pre-market alert and strategy is sent to members. So I did that for Roku and yesterday for Airbnb. 
how do you maximize gain? Now, anybody can buy uh, anything. So you can just buy anything any anytime. You just throw that, you know, there are 500 stocks in S&P. You can um, flip the coin. Uh, if a head comes, then you say, okay, if head comes, I buy Apple. If a tail comes, I don't buy. If head comes, I buy Caterpillar. So you can do that and put equal dollar amount. And at the end, you can say, okay, 51% uh, of, of the stock moved up and I made money. If less than 50% uh, move up, then you lost money. So you can do that. But uh, maybe even 30% uh, of the stock moved up after you flip the coin, head and tail. Even then you make the money on those 30% of the stock which moved up in your favor and 70 um, went against you. So you can, you can still make money and you can still make money by flipping the coin. So you did, you flip the coin and you got in, but then what to do with it? So that's where the money is or where the skill comes. So where to add and when? So how to maximize gain? You need to look for, uh, cap have, first of all, you need to have the capacity capital wise to add more to your existing position. So always be looking uh, to add more to your existing position when it turn around and give you the brand new signal. So there are some stocks uh, which go down and then turn around and start to give a brand new signal. I go long. So uh, give you this example, uh, GRWG. So look at GRWG. Uh, is giving, I am already in and uh, I had a pullback, I don't know, 50, 60 cents uh, loss in my options and now it's giving me brand signal, brand new signal. So instead of uh, just uh, sitting, uh, add more to it and average down. One way of doing it is uh, rolling up by new strike same month. So for, for example, Roku, you can do that. Uh, Roku, let's say you had, uh, I had April 65 calls. So I can turn around, I sold uh, the call and I can turn around and say, okay, I buy April, let's say I had 65, I buy April 80 calls if I expect. Or yesterday I could have done Airbnb and say, okay, I buy April 150. So I could do that, buy a new strike, same month, same month. Or you can buy a new strike and next month. So if you have April, if you have March calls, March, let's say Roku, March 65. You can go buy April 80 calls right now. So you can do that uh, if you think Roku will go up. So April 80, you sold March 65. Or when the target is hitting, you can uh, sell the short calls. So you create the spread. So when the target is about to hit, you create the short spread. So now your profit is locked. Um, and you, you know, you can sell, let's say you had April 65 calls and you say, you know what, I don't want to sell April 65. I sell uh, my, I sell and uh, against this April 65 calls, I sell April 80 calls. So when you sell April 80 calls, you collect some premium, but then you created a big spread, uh, 15 point wide spread. So now your maximum gains will come when the Roku goes to 80. So now you will make more money. You lock some gains by pulling out all the money, uh, selling April 80 calls because you collected the premium. And now you are, you know, you will sell at uh, April. Uh, April 80 will expire if Roku doesn't go by April expiry to 80. If it goes above 80, you will get the maximum gains based on the spreads, which is 15 point wide. So you can do that. You can say, okay, you know, I don't want to take a risk on this option. It's too volatile right now. Uh, implied volatility is high and I'm making too much money. I take this money and I buy some shares. So you could buy, like, let's say today at, uh, at open, you already have options and you say, okay, you know, I buy 200 shares of Roku. So you bought 200 more shares of Roku, especially you can do that during pre-market hours because the options are not being traded or during the first 15 minutes, if you think the Roku will go up, but the spread is so wide, it's so crazy. Uh, I'm a big boy, I, I can afford, I buy 200 shares of Roku. So you buy 200 shares of Roku and then you sell it later. So not only you are making money on your call, but then you added more uh, to your position via shares or you can sell, uh, do the naked put. So you can say, okay, you know, I have a call, but uh, I can sell uh, March puts on uh, Roku, March, uh, let's say 65 puts. So I collect the premium. If Roku goes by expiry, if they assign me uh, the puts, 
if they assign me the shares, I collect the I collected the premium. My cost base is a 62 because I sold uh, the puts for three dollars. So my cost base is 62. So I don't mind owning Roku at 62 because uh, during the you know the news comes and all that. So you can do lots of tricks to maximize your gains. All right. We send you the news update. We send you technical analysis update, like I'm doing it right now. We send you the volume update if there is some noticeable, like Roku today early morning was had a huge volume and yesterday was airbnb and then there are some stocks also which i'm watching have a nice volume uh and i bought uh, cyh so shares so send it to the tiny stocks have a nice volume and then we send you the alert to log gains update so constantly sending you the update and our customer service is awesome sometimes we send you the alert to buy more when we see the opportunity whether to buy so buy more is not only to average down, buy more also to average up. So we send you the alert when it's looking good, when it has more potential, and we know we are sending you the second alert at a higher price. So we do tell you. So let's say we send you the alert for Meta, and it's at 10, and it's trading at 6. And when we see the opportunity, so we need to average down, we average down. And I can even send you the alert to buy more Meta if you can, or initiate a new trade even if it's trading at $10.50 or 11, because there's a higher, I see the potential. So even if you sell at higher, you know, buy high and sell higher. So even if you buy at 10 before, and now you're adding more at 11, so you're adding good stuff on top of the good stuff. So it's at 10, now your average cost is 10.50, but you're adding more to the good, uh, you know, the thing which is really moving. So you need to buy more. So. And last thing before we go is the conditional order I teach in a separate webinar. So we send you the targets in terms of stocks. So we, because we are trading stocks, we are not, we, we are reading the charts of the stock. We are not reading the charts of options. So when I showed you the chart of Roku or Airbnb or DraftKings uh, and making the decision, we are not making the decision based on the option. So I don't know uh, if you can make the decision based on options. People do maybe. So. So the targets are determined based on the stock targets. So I send you the targets, but on the back end, I know at each target, what is the profit potential. So I do the work on each target. I know the profit potential, the percentage gain, the dollar gain. So I do all that work and I constantly monitor that when this target hit, what will be my members gain? What will be, we will be making in percentage wise. When we see there's no gain left, Let's say green target, and um, the 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 it, some time has passed, and the green target has not hit, and the profit target was 30%. Now I see uh, when the green target hits, it will make 10% because of the time decay in the option. So I adjust that target. So I go about and I say, you know what, the green target will hit, and the members will make only 10% now because of the time decay kicked in. So we adjust the target. So we send you the targets, revised target. So you know that so in the background i'm i'm evaluating all the options targets based on the stock target but if you want you can set the conditional order you need to learn on your broker there is a separate webinar on my youtube channel on the real trade genie you can go and learn the conditional order or some brokers call it activation rule so you can set the activation rule to sell your contracts option contract at the market price at that price so there's the catch uh, based on any event occurring so based on, uh, let's say you have a Roku calls and you want to sell all your Roku calls when the stock target hit 75. So you can set the order, sell my, all my option contract in Roku April 65. When Roku hits, uh, uh, Roku goes up equal and above 75. So that talk is targets when Roku hits 75, your option contracts become a market order and it gets sold. So do that for condition uh, liquid market where the options are liquid. You can also set the conditional order based on some uh, other symbol. It's just uh, it's just a condition. So anything you can say sell all my Roku call when Airbnb hits 150. Maybe there is a, uh, there is a, a relationship. There is some relationship you have figured it out that you know what I need to sell Roku when Airbnb hits 150. So you're not uh, depending on Roku what is doing, but you're depending on Airbnb or S&P hit 5,500, sell my Roku call. Or when NASDAQ hit uh, these many thousand points, 
then sell my roku so you can do all kinds of conditional orders so i teach in a separate webinar you can do some research and see if it helps you uh, learning the conditional order based on uh, some other event occurring so you can liquidate your whole basket of stocks and options based on some event occurring all right so i stop here let me see if there is a chat i saw some i don't know where my chat window is i'm sorry all right so i'll see you in a few days i will prepare something else all right thank you bye